Hello Year 8 and welcome to video number 2. So hopefully everyone in the class has similar creative layout. So the page is full from the forehead of your person to the top of a really interesting create and shape that you have then sectioned. What I'd like you to do now is to fill each section with different pattern. Now, what I've got here is a sheet in front of me that is helpful in terms of patterns based on Zentangle. So what you will have in lessons is your teacher will be able to, once you've watched this video, put on the PowerPoint slide where I put lots of different pattern inspiration for you. And your teacher will be able to leave that PowerPoint slide on the board so that you can look at that and select which ones you want to use. Now you don't have to copy, but I suggest that for the first couple of shapes, that is a, a recommendation that you try and mimic the pattern in the squares where uh, on the PowerPoint. But you can absolutely create your own Zentangle pattern. So to create a really successful Zentangle pattern, it has to be quite intricate and it has to have some element of repeat. Okay, so I'm going to take you through some popular ones um, and some hints and tips how to make some successful ones. Okay, so one which students really love is this one here. Okay, so this is the monochrome, monochrome pattern here. Um, I'll show you step by step how to create the waves and then how to create the alternative circle. So I'll use this one here. What I'd like you to do for that one is to first of all create your waves very lightly and draw quite lightly at first with your pencil, keeping them going in the same direction, almost like a stripe effect, following the first curves that you've drawn. So they all have a similar curve. Then what I'd like you to do is draw very, very lightly a series of circles making sure the circles you draw go across more than one line. Okay. So different sizes, but that go across more than one line. And then you then decide which vertical stripe you want to create as your black, which you shade in and which vertical stripe next to it then will be left blank, left white of the page. And then the next one you'll create, um, you'll add shading to create a black stripe. So I'll just quickly show you on here. Make sure your shading is neatly done, accurately done, and goes to the darkest that your pencil is capable of. Okay. When you're shading up to the edge of a line, the direction that you're shading in is important so you get that crisp edge. So don't shade into the line horizontally. It's always best to shade vertically up so you get that lo lovely crisp edge. Now, where you then come across your first outline of your circle, you're gonna leave that blank, leave that white. And that then determines that the next stripe in that circle you'll then shade black. Okay, shade the darkest of your pencil. Do it as neatly as you can. So you have that bold effect. Okay. And you can start doing this now if you wish. I'm going to attempt this one. So this vertical line is black. So the next one will be left white. The next one will go black and what you end up with is an accurate interpretation of that Zentangle pattern. Okay. Now the other popular one that people like is called the Vortex and I'll make sure that is on your PowerPoint. So I'm going to show you how to draw the Vortex one now once I finish this one off. Okay. So 
It's really quite tricky to do this as I'm leaning over my iPad, which is on a stand blocking part of my view, but I'll try my best to show you exactly what that will end up like. Okay. So by a series of vertical lines and then apply the circles and then shade the alternative colors, black and white to create a monochrome pattern and you'd fill the whole space. Okay, so another one that people are really keen on when we do any Zentangle work is called the Vortex. Okay, and the Vortex is this one here. Now, you can do some lovely tonal shading with this one. So I'll quickly show you a little demonstration on that one. So I'll use, for example, this area here. You start in the center and you create curved lines outwards, making sure accurately that you do not go past the edge of your shape. Nice and smoothly from the center out. Trying to keep the curve as accurately spaced as you can. And you can do them closer together than this. You can do them really tight if you wish. Making sure that you don't stop the curve until you reach the edge of the pattern. Okay. Now what you can do, if you wish, you can add some tonal shading to this. So some creative pieces I've seen in the past have started at the center of the circle with the darkest tone on your pencil by pressing really hard and then moving outwards and applying less and less pressure and getting lighter and lighter as we move towards the edge of the space. Remembering that if you want it to smoothly transition from the dark to the light and have that lovely smooth gradient that you shade with tiny little circles that overlap so you get that lovely, lovely gradual change. Okay, and you do that maybe alternative um, shapes or you could do the whole thing so the center is dark going out to light. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to have a look on the board and I want you to select whichever patterns you wish try to mimic and copy the first few at least till you get into the swing of things and then if you want to put your own twist on them that's fine can i just say though yeah right one thing if you select a, pa a pattern such as rain dotty or mist up here or ones that have lots and lots of tiny tiny um circles in them it is not a case of that it's not a case of bouncing your pencil off Zentangle is a really controlled form of pattern. Okay, so each circle has to be individually drawn. Okay, I want to see pencil control. I don't want to see anything too wild, wild. Okay, so if you want tiny dots and you want tiny circles, by all means, include them, but control how you draw them. So relax, enjoy, focus in on the patterns and hopefully you'll create something really excellent. Thanks.